There is a place, not here or there, but somewhere in between. There is a space in the thin air that really can be seen. If you listen and observe, you may be surprised. Some may call it Camelot, or even Paradise. Some may say you cross a bridge, others through a door. But all I know about this place is that I call it Evermore. Evermore. Good evening, sweet spirits. Welcome to the show. My name is Suzanne Sorrell, and I'm the host of the Evermore Paranormal Network. On this episode, we have a paranormal powerhouse, and she's also my friend. Please welcome Sabrina Beakley to the show. Hello, Suzanne. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming all the way from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. That is so nice that you come all the way here. So did you, um, what I ask most people when I bring them on the show, especially if they're friends, if you remember how we met. Yes, we met at Feminology in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania mm -hmm. um, at the expo. Yeah, I don't remember what year it was, but I think it was like the maybe the second year that I went, maybe 2014 or something. Maybe, yeah, I'm not sure though. Yeah, me neither. I, know, I can't been remember. For a while. I know. <laughs> yeah, so and we met, I think, because of a mutual friend that was already on the show. Yes. And Katie Lynn. Yep. And so, where where were you born and raised? Have you been in the same area all your life, pretty much? Pretty much. Um, I was born and raised in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, the home of the Little League. Oh wow. And so, are you married? You got children, grandchildren? You're awful young. <laughs> I am a widow. I have five children. Wow. Um, four of them are adults. Um, one is um, 16. I have three grandchildren and two more on the way in October and November. <laughs> wow, you got me beat. I only have three right now, <laughs> three grandchildren. So, where did you uh, go to school? And I know you're pursuing a degree, and mm -hmm. tell me about that. Um, I had went to Renaissance Munson um, for my associates, um, criminology um, and psychology, mm -hmm. criminal justice. Um, I'm on, right now at Notre Dame um, pursuing my bachelor's mm -hmm. for psychology. It, it's funny how I've had a lot of people on the show and we all have that criminal justice background. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're, you're studying psychology because you want to use that in the paranormal field, correct? Yes, yes. And uh, it's part of your research and so on. Um, so most of us in the paranormal field have a day job. I know you got five kids and grandkids, that's your day job, I know. Yes. But do you have, do you do anything else, uh, you know, like a day job? Uh, um, work in an I, office or no, something? No, no, I actually don't. Um, I pretty much stay, I'm an at-home mom. Well, yeah, with that many <laughs> with that many kids and so on, that and and you probably watch the grandkids a lot too. Right, right. So other than ghost hunting, um, do you have any hobbies that are not paranormal related? Um, I crochet, if that counts. <laughs> well, you know, something just came to mind. What you've started doing? Not only okay, you crochet, yes, but mm -hmm. you do the an you do the ancestry stuff. Oh yes, genealogy, and I'm really deep into that now. Be Absolutely. And and what else do you do? You just don't want to mention it? Couponing. Oh, yes. How did you forget about that? I am a couponer <laughs> and a penny shopper, yes. I, well, I know, and I'm, see, I'm seeing your posts, and I'm like amazed. Absolutely. And you, you're going to have to show me how you do that. I mean, it's just amazing. What, $200 worth of stuff or $2? Oh, yes, $2? absolutely. Um, now, actually, I've, with the penny shopping, mm -hmm. I've actually done... Um, hauls of two, $200 for 60, maybe 60 cents. Wow, you're gonna have to tell me about that and how yeah. you do that. And the couponing is extreme, so everything basically that I get um, in couponing, usually my out-of-pocket cost mm -hmm. would be like a dollar something or whatever, and maybe the entire load is free. Wow, that's great. So, and I donate to people that need, so. 
Wow, that is awesome. Well, we're going to take a quick break, mm -hmm. and we're gonna, we'll come back and talk about ghost hunting. My journey skating for the gold taught me a lot, but my journey with breast cancer has been one of my greatest teachers. Every woman's breast cancer is unique. Be Wiser educates and empowers women to take control of their breast cancer treatment plan and help navigate their own path beyond five years. Talk to your doctor about information and tests to personalize a treatment plan that fits your needs. I did. Be informed, be wiser, support survivors like us. Hello, welcome back. We are talking with Sabrina Beakley, and we're now going to get into the juicy stuff. We're going to talk about ghost hunting, or what others call paranormal investigating. You know, I say ghost hunting because it's just easier to say. But um, anyway, I would like to find out how long have you been, you know, studying the field or, you know, involved in the paranormal field? I've been involved in the paranormal field for 18 years. Um, studying different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And so what or how did you get involved? What happened? Was there something, some reason why you got into the field? Um, for really most part for personal experiences that I was having, family members were having, and I just wanted to help. Mm -hmm. And so you started a team, you're a founder of a team. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the name? where it's located, you know, just tell me all about your, your team. What's the name of it? It's uh, Ghost Under Investigation from Central Pennsylvania. We're out of Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Um, when, did, when was it established? About how uh, long in ago? In 2006. 2006. Mm -hmm. And uh, do, you, do you have, I see that you are an educational training paranormal group. Yes. I, um, that teach. makes you different. Yes, than... I teach. I, we're not just going into a home or um, to a haunted location. They're learning. They're constantly learning when we mm -hmm. go into a place. Okay, and so you are the founder and owner of that. Yes. So I love the name, by the way. I just you. love that name. So I always want to say ghosts under investigation, mm -hmm. but it's just ghost. Ghost. So I got that right now, finally. <laughs> so I, this is, might seem like a, a silly question on a paranormal show, but I found I'm really shocked with answers usually. Are you a believer or a skeptic? I'm actually a believer. Okay. Yeah. And uh, why, do you, you, can you give me in a couple sentences why you are a believer versus, I mean, believe it or not, there are people that are in the field that are skeptics. Right. It's absolutely. shocking when I hear somebody's a skeptic. Um, I'm a believer because obviously I've had my own personal experiences mm -hmm. since I've been very, very young. Mm -hmm. So it's just not something you can wipe from your mind. Right. So what is your favorite thing about ghost hunting or, or the, and or the paranormal field in general? Um, dealing with people. I yeah. like people and helping people and um, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. How? On the contrary, what is the least favorite thing that you like? What is the least favorite thing about ghost hunting in the paranormal field? Is there something that you just totally hate? I know you, I'm reading your mind right now. <laughs> she's the psychic, but I know what she's thinking. <laughs> Whoa. No. Um, I would say my least favorite thing in the paranormal would be um, the operation of team members coming in and mm -hmm. going out. Um, spending time in training and then you know they're not really into it they're in for the fun part of it mm -hmm. and um, I'm not doing it for fun so right. I look down towards that sort of thing. Oh yeah you have to be any any more I feel like you have to be for me in particular the last couple of years I've been I found that team members have been disloyal mm -hmm. and they they take all the info and learn from you and then they you know, stabbing in the back or whatever. The paradrama is in the field. Yeah, there's lots of that. That's so, very you know, you waste, favorite too. <laughs> yeah, and you waste your time. I mean, you're, you're not wasting your time, but you're training these people. You're teaching them mm -hmm. the ropes and everything. And then they go, oh, I'm not, you know, they've wasted your time, in other words. You could have yes, been. Yes, that, that's my issue, mm -hmm. wasting my time and the other team members that are committed mm -hmm. to it. 
So, what was your, do you remember your first paranormal experience? Oh, absolutely. And about how old were you? Where did it happen? And give me some, give me a story. I was six years old. That, that That's the last one I can remember. Um, I was six years old. I lived on Mulberry Street, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, it was a row of houses of three. We lived in the middle. Um, I was told to go to bed. Um, I used to sleep in my mom's bed because I was scared of the dark. She used to send me to bed before it got dark. Told me, you know, go to sleep before it gets dark and I wouldn't be scared. Well, I was trying that. Um, it started getting really dark and I don't know. I just picked up, I was laying towards the end of the bed and picked up my head and there was a man standing there. Oh my goodness. Um, when I looked at him, I still remember it like standing yesterday. Standing at the foot of your bed he was and standing, you were six. Yeah, he was standing at the edge of the, edge of the bed. And, um, I got chills when just kind of like looking straight. He didn't have a facial expression or anything. His hair was black and slicked back. He was in a suit. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that scared me the most was when I looked at his face, he had no eyes. It was oh. black. And I screamed on the top of my lungs. And I remember getting under the sheet because my mom said that that used to make him go away. It would make oh, yeah. it go away. Ooh. And um, of course, my mom and my aunt at the time had lived with us, um, and they come running up to see what was going on. Needless to say, my mom allowed me to go downstairs and be mm -hmm. on the couch where I felt safer and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, yeah, that was my first one. Now, did that, I'm curious, and I love how, you know, you I, I'd never heard that story before, and I'm just intrigued, and, and I can also understand sleep, my eyes, it, when you watch other shows, you're going to see I slept with my mom in high school yeah. because some, my, my mom's boyfriend died and I, I saw a ghost. And so is it, I, I was like teenager sleeping right. with my mom because I was terrified of my own room. So, you know, it's, it's normal. Absolutely. And I just have to ask, have you seen, uh, did the guy come back? Or was this a one-time thing? One time. Th actually, I had saw him. I'm, I'm fibbing. Mm -hmm. I had saw him twice um, in that home. Mm -hmm. um, once in the bedroom, like I had stated, and then again in the bathroom, which made me afraid to go up to go to the bathroom by myself. So, of course, my mom or my aunt or my dad would have to take me up the steps so I could go to the restroom. <laughs> so how, how long did you have to live there? I mean, you were six when six, this happened. I think, yeah, I think we moved out around um, seven, eight. No, actually, it would have been around seven, eight years old, yeah. So it wasn't too long, but yeah. you know the. But my, we lived you there. had me beat for yeah. for you. Uh, my first paranormal experience was eight in okay. a near drowning, but I've noticed that once you have, if you have an experience like that at an early age, and uh, all your life, you're you're just like it's it's still it's going to always be on your mind, mm -hmm. and so although that that was a, a scary incident for a child at yes. six years old. Do you have another story that's like your scariest or even your most profound? And this is also, that story would fill in both of those uh, criteria of scariest or profound paranormal experience um, or something that just changed your life. That or the scariest? Um, I would say definitely, I've had my own experiences, but I'm actually going to talk about um, my sister's experience. That's mm -hmm. what's really pushed me into the paranormal. Um, her, she was having a haunting in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. And um, needless to say, there was scratching and they were being, the young, the children would be locked behind doors where there was no locks. They even went as far as taking like the handles off to stop mm -hmm. it. And that wouldn't even work on bathrooms and thing, things like that. Um, there was levitation going on there. Wow. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was, it was, that was scary for me and them because I was lost at that time on what should I do, where should I go, mm -hmm. and that's what led me to feminology. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow. So that is scary. Like you said, it's scary just hearing that. Yeah. And that, things like that catapult us to the next level in this field. And I guess my last question for this segment is, have you ever considered leaving or walking away from the paranormal field? Yes. And, uh, and so have I on many occasions yes, for, for different reasons. Yeah, for many, many different reasons. Um, just, you know, the, it gets drama within groups and, mm -hmm. you know, and that sort of thing. But I would say um, leaving it because 
of there's dangers. You, you can bring things home with you, which has happened to me. Same here. And mm -hmm. um, that was not fun. That was very scary for my family mm -hmm. and stuff. So there is a lot of danger with it. So Right. That's, it's not, a, it really isn't a game, you know. Right, and no. it, I mean, we both know that. We're professionals in the field and we take it seriously. Right. Um, and every time to know the knowledge of that, every time you're going into a case or just playing around or whatever you're doing out there, there's a possibility whatever it is may go home with you. And I have had stuff come home. Have you? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with, we're going to talk to Sabrina about being a psychic, a radio show host, and if we have time, some aliens. Losing weight's a lot harder than gaining it, but with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease, and that makes every step very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. Hello, and we're back with Sabrina Beakley, and now we're going to talk to her about being a psychic medium. So, in your your bio, you said you've worked with law enforcement agencies. You've worked you work with adults and children with their abilities, mm -hmm. and you volunteer to help families with issues. Mm -hmm. um, so, when did you realize that you had psychic abilities? And I guess how? When and how did you? I noticed really young in age that I was different from other people and other kids and mm -hmm. things like that but back when I was growing up it, it wasn't something we talked about mm -hmm. it was something that was shoved under the carpet sh you know we don't talk about these things um, I didn't really I kind of ignored a lot of it until I became an adult mm -hmm. with it of really understanding it so you when you were was did you feel I know the story in the previous segment about you were six when you saw your first mm -hmm. spirit um, were you sensing these abilities prior to six? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I believe I was born this way. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I, it's funny because I have always thought, I, same thing, I've always thought that I had something special ever since I almost drowned. And now at my age, I'm finally kind of, I've been in denial for myself about it, that I didn't, that I wasn't psychic. But now I'm actually owning it now. I'm starting to study my, go, okay, I. I think I might be psychic. Right. So, um, so I, I, I may have been born with it, but I'm just coming to terms with it, I guess, right, right now. Right, right. So, do you consider your abilities a gift, a curse, or something in between, or something altogether different? Well, um, for the longest time, I considered it a curse. Mm -hmm. um, but now, I think I, I came to a point where I embraced it and mm -hmm. realized, you know, I could help people. Um, with my abilities and that's you know mm -hmm. that sort of thing but um, yeah I it's a little bit of both I guess because okay. at the same time it can be it can be a pain yeah I know because I, I, I'm sensing you know I lay awake I know things that I don't want to know I see yeah. things that I don't want right. to see absolutely so you know we've talked before a little bit you know we've I've had other psychics on the show and they all everybody works differently mm -hmm. everybody has a different like skill set right for you, you've told me that you see auras. Is I, that yes, I see auras. Um, I see the, if you want to, if you may, the dead. Mm -hmm. um, I also hear. You also hear. Yes. Now, one time, speaking of auras, you told me my aura one time, and I, my it's kind of a stupid question. I guess I don't know. <laughs> do aura color? Do do I change? Oh yes. Your aura changes. Your it's aura. not like a set cha aura. No. Of, so your, they change. Yeah, your aura is constantly changing to the moods or whatever you're talking about or, you know, just everyday things. Um, okay. If you're sick, it'll change. Oh. You, you can actually look at the aura and tell that you're, you're ill and those okay. sort of things. So, yeah. Cool. So now you are also, you also own a business called Para Events. Yes. Now you 
in your in your bio you said I bring strange and unusual lectures and shows into my community and elsewhere and you also uh, arrange events throughout the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So can can you give me an example of an event that you've arranged? <laughs> yes. Or and also do you have anything exciting coming up that I don't I don't um I don't have anything this year but I am working for next year. Okay. Um so uh but I, the strange and unusual is not just what I'm, I mean by that is I'm not just paranormal based. Right. I have mm -hmm. different of a variety of things mm -hmm. that are different or unknown to people. Right. Okay. So, I know you were going to, at one point you wanted me to come and perform yes. and sing my songs. Yes. Maybe we'll do that someday when I get over my stage fright. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to be recorded on TV and, and it's edited and so on, but to stand up in front of a crowd live and sing, mm -hmm. I'm gonna forget the words, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I definitely wanna, you know, do that sometime. That'd be mm -hmm. cool. Um, because you know I sing to the dead. You see oh, them, absolutely. you talk to them, and um, I sing to them, so, you know. Right. So you were also, and like you're not busy enough as it is, you were also producer and co-host of a radio show. Yes. So what's the name of the radio show? It's called um, Community Paratalk. Um, we're on WRAK, um, iHeartRadio, 1400 AM. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just started um, the Facebook Live. It runs off of my Facebook and off of Ted um, Soul's Facebook. He's the mm -hmm. host of the show. Okay, so that's what I was going to ask you. Like, if I go home right now, I mean, if I turn on, because um, there's so many radio shows out there, you know, oh, yeah. online, this and that. If somebody wants to listen to your show, mm -hmm. they would just turn it on AM, go to 1400, 1400. whatever time your show airs, you will be able to hear it. Yes. All over the uh, country. Yes, all over. It's all over. <laughs> yeah, I want to come on that show too. We, you've been asking me to come, so I want to come on that show sometime. Um, so you, I, it's, a, it's called Community Paratalk. So mm -hmm. you talk about the paranormal? Yes. Like what we're doing here? We, we talk about the paranormal and, uh, or anything unknown. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be um, ghost space or, mm -hmm. you know, this space, but it's a little bit of everything. Like supernatural. So, right. I mean, you can talk about, say, which we'll get into in a second, UFOs, mm -hmm. yes. as well as like Bigfoot and ghosts. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, even though my show's called Paranormal Network, I too, I'm not the borders, you know. Yeah, I like to expand uh, Yeah, it. we do. We don't want to just talk about ghosts all the time because, in my opinion, I think there's an interrelationship somehow. Oh, yes, I absolutely do, too. There's a connection to all of it. So let's um, talk about then. <clears throat> I saw that you wrote a forward to a, uh, for a book that is about UFOs and aliens by Tom Conwell, and it's called They Are Here, Volume 2. Yes. So I, I had no idea that you were even into that aspect of our field. So, in your opinion, you know, what is your opinion about UFOs and aliens? And, um, like I said, do you think that there's an interrelationship also? Absolutely. With, this, like, the paranormal? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, I wrote the foreword. Um, Tom had came to me and asked me. I've worked with Tom for a couple years now um, because I am an abductee. A lot of people don't know my story because I don't talk to a lot of people about it. So we're getting um, an exclusive today, right? Yes, you are. Wow. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I want to hear it all. Yeah. I do. In his book, uh, in what I had to write, I, I studied genealogy, and it had a lot to do with um, bloodlines and things like that. So mm -hmm. of understanding my own psychism and, you know, is there a connection? Is there a bloodline connection? So you'd actually have to read the book to find out more. Oh, to find out more about mm -hmm. um, your abduction? Oh no, my no. abduction is not in there. The story is not oh. in there. That that's his. Can you tell us a little? Can you tell us that a little bit about the story? Um, there was three different abductions. Three different my times. Life. Yes. Okay. Um, the second one is the one that um we re really talk about only because there was other people definitely there. Um, I lived in Akron, Ohio when it occurred. All three. Uh, no, times? no, no. Oh, okay. Two in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and one in Akron, Ohio. Okay. Um, the one in Akron, um, I had actually was um, living with my aunt, um, Jenny, and my cousin Beth. And me and Beth shared a room and a bed, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, I was also pregnant. 
with my fourth pregnancy. And um, my cousin tells the story best because obviously she's seen more than what I remembered. Um, she, uh, I remember the like lights and what have you. So you're like and laying on a table kind no, of thing, or um, no? They weren't e examining you. No, no, no. Um, that part of it, I really don't remember. I just know that when I was taken, um, I was asleep, mm -hmm. and I do remember like faintly re seeing lights. Mm -hmm. But according to my cousin and my aunt and what have you, um, not only did the lights happen. Um, like everything in the room flew around. They came in into the bedroom and I floated head first out the window. Now, and your That was closed. Your sister, who was in the room with you? My cousin. Your cousin. Beth. Did she see all this happening? Absolutely. She was, oh when goodness. I woke up um, thinking it was a dream, Yeah. Um, she was in the corner cuddled crying, telling me to stay away. It scared her so bad, you know. Wow. Of what she was remembering. I think we're gonna have to have you back just to talk a whole episode on your different, your different uh, abductions mm -hmm. that, and as well as, uh, you know, other things that we, we can talk about. Um, but for now, we've run out of time. Yep. Thank you for coming all the way from Pennsylvania. Thank you for having me. And we definitely wanna have you back on a regular basis. Okay. So. We can we we don't do we're not skyping in yet, but we can try that sooner or later where we Skype people in. But we really want to keep it where we're in the studio. I have no problem coming. So thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you. So thank you for watching the Evermore Paranormal Network. I hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time, peace out. <laughs>